Hey guys, what's going on? Luca here, Studio DMI with my Mix Lab. Today we're going to talk about gain staging. There's a lot of use of this word gain staging, but I would like there's a lot of like confusion about why is important, what is relevant also on the plugin word on the DAW, but it's coming from the past. So let's talk a minute about the the beginning. Why gain staging through the years was crucial to improve the quality of recording and then mixing and then eventually mastering on the analog domain gain staging is extremely important so essentially you're dealing with gear that have noise floor that have essentially a way that if you're pulling up we gain some noise from the gear you might end up using different piece of gear in a serial mode to amplify noise or on the other end to create a possible issue, which is the opposite of that, which is gain into piece of gear too loud, create distortion, and then amplify distortion through the process. So long story short, we create a standard back then. It was like VU meters allow us to create a standard, which is a zero dB VU, which is equal to minus 18 full scale, as a starting point to a proper gain staging process. So if you think on the analog way, you get out of your DAW, you try to stay at zero dB VU, which is equal to minus 18 full scale. And from the zero dB VU, you can apply a piece of gear and retain the zero dB VU across the board if you use a mixer or across the mastering if you use a mastering gear, going back into the DAW. So if you use compression or EQ, you're trying to do it in a way that you leave edge room, but you're not stay too low or you stay too loud. You stay on the zero dB view as a standard. Um, in my case, when I use outboard gear, I keep in mind the zero dB view as the starting point. And through the mixing process, I try to don't gain level. The big benefit on the analog gear is if I'm staying on that sweet spot, I'm now gaining uh, low noise and noise floor that is there, but also I'm not pushing into distortion, harmonic distortion. Now, it's a different story when I go into the mastering phase. If I go into the mastering phase, and then my goal is to, over time, gain some level, starting from zero dB VU, with compression, with EQ, uh, with parallel compression, I start to gain level from zero dB VU up. Now, when I do that, I might on purpose clip the converter at the end of the chain, but I always keep in mind that there is a sweet spot. Now, fast forward many, many years on the plugin world, on the DAW, gain staging is changing a little bit the purpose. So essentially, we are not dealing with low noise or uh, clipping where we have infinite edge room using 32 bit floating point, but we're care about gain staging for other reason, which is using the same level of edge room. So let's get into the session and I'll be more specific. All right. Every time we have a mix or a master your studio DMI, there is a prepping phase for this mix. During the prepping phase, we make sure that uh, we gain stage the entire session. So we are getting stamps. Sometimes you're getting stems too loud, sometimes I'm getting stems too low, or sometimes you're getting stems at the right level. What is the right level? We go back to the zero dB view. So let's open a view meter. So when you see zero set up on edge uh, 18, it means zero dB view equal to minus 18 full scale. Our goal is put together all the stems, the combination of the stems, they make the song, we want to stay on the zero dB view on the loudness part of the song. So this song is not being gain staged yet. And let's see what level we have so far. Dancing. Dancing. What comes next? Dancing. 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 Marvelous. So obviously we are slamming the, the meter, we are 
way over zero uh, dBVU. We actually, if you look the stereo bus, we are going over the zero dB peaks. So according to the VU relationship should be minus 18 full scale. So what is the best way to achieve that? Uh, any DAW as a way to reduce the level. Uh, I strongly recommend to not lowering the actual fader. If you pull the fader down, yes, you are lowering the level into the stereo bus, but you are eating the, the actual channel too loud. So the plugin, it's, it's pre-fader. If you have the plugin pre-fader, even if you lower the level, you're still using too much edge room into the plugin. A good way to do it, so in Studio One, you have an option to have uh, gain knobs on top of the session. You can use gain knobs or you can literally select all, all the stems and pull the stems down to minus 18 full scale. So on Studio One, let's use the gain knob. I'm sure that every DAW has a different way to do that. So um, I do a very short loop in a really busy loud part. And then I'm gonna gain stage to hit zero dB when everything is running. All right, let's go. There we go. That's the, the zero dB view. I pull down minus 10 dB to reach the zero dB view. Now, what is the benefit now? That in this way, uh, we are going to have on every track enough edge room to add EQ, add compression, add expansion without clip the channel. Now, clip the channel on the modern DAW doesn't mean you're getting distortion because you simply lower the buses, the output, and you're regaining um, essentially edge room. But the combination of all those stems they're gonna hit the busing or the master bus too loud without having enough edge room to do anything else uh, during the mixing, at the end of the mixing stage or during the mastering stage. Hello, my name is Luca Pretolesi and welcome to my mix lab. I'm going to share my personal workflow, template and plugin settings to mix and master your song like I did in All My Mind by Diplo and Sidepiece. Subscribe now to watch this plus new courses every week. Only on mymixlab.com. There is also another point. When you have the same edge room all the time, you're able to make the same decision. So essentially, if you if you create a preset that it's Actually, we have one. Let's let's check it out. So, if you do SSL compression on the kick on, on on the kick drum, for example, and you like a certain type of compression, and you if you save a preset always on zero dBVU, this means that you can apply that preset on any type of material, having the same result. Versus if you have every song at different level with different gain staging level across um, the mix, now your preset is not going to work because based on different level every time, you're not going to have the same level of threshold. The detector will detect the material in a different way. Now, let's talk about uh, gain staging inside of a single instrument, which is very important. So if we, let's say that we are happy on this production as far as like level of kick drum bass versus the overall song, right? So let's play this part. We like the level. There is no reason to change the level of the, the kick, but we want to change the envelope, the EQ of the of the kick. It, and we want to retain the same level. We don't want to change the level. Well, a good way to do it, it's gain staging inside of compression EQ. Starting with compressor. Let's compress the kick drum.
So I'm compressing about 5 dB and I use a makeup gain to give back the same level that I'm compressing. And I keep a close look on my view, a view meter to make sure that with or without compressor, I'm not changing the peaks. So we are changing the envelope with compression. We are not changing the level. Now, what is the next step? Let's say now we want to EQ what we just compress. Um, now, with or without compression, let's put this in the middle like this. All right, so. We're getting just a touch of peak on the kick drum, so let's lower that. All right, so we have the yellow line with or without compression. We are staying on the yellow line. We're just changing um, the, uh, the envelope a little bit. Now, so now the EQ, if you, you're EQing and you want to test the EQ curve we're doing on the kick drum with or without compression, you're not going to change the level. Very important. So let's uh, reshape a little bit the, the tonal balance of uh, this kick drum. So what I did, I, I slide lower a little bit uh, my output level after I made those decisions. And then when I look the meter, once again, I'm staying on zero dB view. So if now let's, uh, let's play the song and we want to clearly A and B with or without compression EQ, we don't want to have any jump of level during that process. So let's try this. Now let's play this part. Marvelous. Let's do something more extreme so you get an idea. You can also use the auto gain, but to be honest, I don't trust the auto gain much. I prefer to do manually. There we go. So again, let's do this just in relationship with some other uh, percussive sound. Now we have we just use gain staging properly on the kick drum in a way that if we apply the same type of mentality across the mix, means that at the end, you can bypass the entire plugins with or without having zero change of gain, just change of compression, tone, EQ, reverbs, all that. To make uh, our life, life a little more complicated, let's, let's shave and let's reshape the bass line with the same same concept okay so the concept is we are changing the tonal balance and then we are gain staging we lower the output to match the before eq I train myself through the year, so I'm really quick. I'm able to get to lower the output gain to uh, kind of match what I'm pushing with the EQ. So every band is adding X amount of dB multiplied for the band that you have. On the output gain, you are lowering the level and you are changing essentially the balance, the tonal balance, but you are 
again, you are gain staging, so we are lowering the, the, the level. Uh, if you don't, so now let's play this. We're probably EQing, changing the, the gain of the, the baseline. Let's check the meter once again to zero the BVU. <laughs> Now let's bypass what we just did on kick and bass. We should have same level, just different tone. I hope that makes sense. So essentially, proper game stage allow you to retain the same peak RMS level, the same level across the mix, regardless the amount of plugging you're using. There is no, the purpose changed through the years. You're not doing to avoid, um, to overload or to get, to gain too much load noise or to uh, distort the next plugin because you're not happening, it's not happening. But you're, you're giving yourself the same level of space to push or to cut. Um, if, let's go back to the initial way this song was uh, being delivered. So if we go back, and now, remember, we pull minus 10 dB, all right? If, let's go back to zero, the way has been delivered. And we leave the plugin the way we just did. Now, if you look the level of the, the bass, we are overloading the bass. Just because every single step of pushing, we are going over zero. Let's say that I don't even lower my output. I leave like this, I'm just adding, adding, right? So I do that, I'm adding, so I go zero dB. Now it's getting even worse. Check, check those level. The bass is totally in red. This means that we, if you go now and we look into the stereo bus, on a stereo bus, the red channel, check the level on the stereo bus. We just, just adding EQ on the bass and, and compression EQ on the kick. Now we're already way over zero on the serial bus. Now what we do, we, if you multiply this multiple times on different channel, you're going to overload the serial bus. And in order to fix it, you need to kind of re-level the entire song uh, through the process, which is changing the intention of the mix. All right, guys, today was about gain staging. I hope that this example trigger some ideas, uh, something that you might want to change or rethink when you approach your mix. It's Lucas Studio DMI with my mix lab.